Welcome back to Move Trailer Reviews Podcast. This is your host, Chris, with Brandon and Ro. And um, yeah, all of us are here this time. And no, I do see black films. There's just certain black films I don't go to see. The black ones is the other ones he doesn't go to wait, see. Wait, wait, wait. So, so does. With the black people in them. So, right. like, Moonlight doesn't count? And, like, all the... and, 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 and Us doesn't count? Well, like... Y'all act, like, y'all, like, y'all, y'all act like I didn't just, just review us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. But that's a horror yeah, like, movie. Literally, yeah, literally this month. Literally and this month. And, and it's, Same and it's month. Jordan Peele. Same month. Yeah, it doesn't count. Same month. Doesn't Same count. Month. I, the only black films I haven't gone to see, Medea, is it, y'all don't say uh, shit. Y'all don't, see, y'all don't say shit about me not going to see Tyler Perry films. Because we don't go see those either. That's because those are Tyler Perry films? Okay, I don't, right, go, I, I don't, go, to, I don't go to Will Packer films. Right, that's the other black films. That's all the other ones. Right, which which you guys never make me want to go to see because they sound horrible the way you guys talk about them. <laughs> you guys are not making me want to go see those films. All right. So the next Will Packer film I'm, I go see, I won't tell you it has black people in it. And we'll Don't see tell me go. it's a Will Packer film. Like, I probably would have gone to see Little if, if you guys hadn't told me it was a Will Packer film. Then it was like, oh. But y'all say that. You, them, even when y'all give them good reviews, they don't really... But like Marseille and Issa Rae should have been enough. Eh. That should have been enough. Eh. See, see, shame in Issa Rae because she's black. No, no, Just no. Black. Because even, even, even. Okay, I can't, even I can't in, follow you on that logic saying he's shamed because she's black. I, even, I can't, even, I can't even, go down that road. Even the way y'all talk about it, y'all were like, y'all were like, they, they did the best they could, but it was still a Will Packer film. See, it's like, that's not getting me into the theater, into the theater to watch that film. I'm just Fair saying. Enough. Just saying. No. No, it's, it's about the black people. Hmm. Hmm. Look, man, you bring this on yourself when you leave us without a moderator. Go see Best of Enemies then. It's right around the corner, ain't it? Well, we didn't go see... None of us went to go see that film. Oh, you can't go see it? You still can't go see it? <sighs> Does that count as a black film? It's a black film. It's black and it's half a black film. Wow. <laughs> That's a southern film. That's one of them, I, I don't... Ugh. I don't know why they don't do that. Oh, don't don't, don't the, go see that. What's one. the next black film coming out? The I Intruders like, got black people Ma, in it, and it's a well black film. Ma, there you go. Wait, there the Intruders. Go. Okay, I got to see that. But uh, I'm gonna say Lee. Ma. That Ma film, which by the way, we got that. So. No, that's not a black oh, film. We're, oh, we're not, we're going to see Ma. Wait, she, how, how is that? How is that? How's how is Big Mama uh, uh, getting, sir, getting these white people? A bunch of white kids. It's not a black film. How's okay. that? I feel How's it is. That? I feel Octavia is enough not, to make anything in a complete not a black film, first especially if she's going to kill people. First of all, first of all, you're not you, helping. Now you're an enabler. You're not all, helping. First of all, mm-hmm. any film that Octavia is in, it automatically mm-hmm. comes with a, with a green scale of at least like 10. It comes, with, it comes in at a 10. On like some what greens. Come, if, Octa- if Octavia's in the film, it co- it's automatic green. What? Are you already eating green? Because the other ones have actually been black films. Like Octavia was being typecast with her amazing acting abilities but now they let her be a crazy black woman killing all these white kids it's a horror film with and a black killer in it that, black that's, that's what I'm thinking it's not a black film it's a black film counts, counts. That, see nope it counts. that's cheating one drop rule nigga it counts no you need 5% black people you need one Octavia is and five small, and, uh, and, that, that and a biracial small person like five black people. A black people like that's gonna be hella black mm-hmm. people right there at least 5% it's not enough black in them, though. These are the films we're talking about here, guys. We're we're here. We're here to. Discuss. We're. I'm trying to get filler in now because, like, honestly, I don't know how much we can actually do with this review, and because everything's a spoiler. We're here to talk about Avengers Endgame here, and um, I think we can do it without spoiling. I have faith in us. Hmm. <laughs> At least one of us. <laughs> well, if y'all Negroes aren't coming to the table, we need a damn face. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to see this. Hey, Ro, tell us about the movie. Without spoiling it. Without spoiling it? Don't talk um, about it. Spoilers. Don't ruin it for anybody. Okay. Um, hmm. The team gets together to commiserate over losing to Thanos. Uh, they attempt to move on. They do not fare well emotionally in those efforts to do so. And they come back together with a last dish effort to try to undo what was done without undoing the things that are good about what's happened in the aftermath. Shenanigans. That's struggles. struggles. 
that struggle <laughs> it was like but mm. i did it punk i don't know because i was like reading the back of the book i don't know if that counts i think it counts mm. i don't know that's mm. all of that right in the first trailer mm. you didn't oh. say how much detail i had to go into you said talk about the movie and don't spoil essentially we could have just reviewed the trailer then because we really can't talk about much of anything in this movie without spoiling it outside of just how amazing Marvel is at wrapping shit up. Yo, the funny th- the funniest thing is like we are five or maybe I'll say maybe 10 minutes in the film. And I look at Phenom and I'm like, nigga, they're still like two hours and 50 fucking minutes to go. <laughs> like, I was like, wait, they really, what was that? <laughs> what was that? Like it was like, it, it opens and you're watching it. You're going, well, shit, let's get to it, goddamn. And then you're like, wait, but, uh, uh, okay, movie, so what? Movie over? So what do, what do we do? What do we do now? And, and you're right. Like, you, in your mind, you're going, because we had to mm-hmm. check our phones in so we couldn't actually look at the phones. We, I was like, oh, we, but we got like two and a half hours and three minutes left. What do we, what, what do Did we you guys do? have an impromptu moment where everybody in your movie theater sort of kind of thought maybe there was a moment when they should have clapped at a fade to black without giving anything away? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No, wait, they laughed. They actually <laughs> laughed. Like, did that fade to black? Everybody was kind of like, okay. okay. <laughs> and they just started laughing. And then the next scene pops up, and everybody's like, oh, shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, 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 mm-hmm. That's literally what happened in our movie theater. Everybody was like, what the fuck? <laughs> right. So it was like worse than we had anticipated, is what I'm assuming everybody had thought. But, but give the film credit. It does. It's not like it starts off not kicking you in the balls. Cause it no, it kicks you in your off. face. Your face. They came oh. for your face. I, I'm just wanted to, from a guy's perspective, getting kicked in the balls is much worse than getting kicked in the face. I'm just saying. Uh, okay. okay, congratulations. True. Yes. So. On having balls. Yeah. Fine. They kicked you in your balls squarely. There you go. Caught them both in one shot. With some heel toe. Mm-hmm. Steel mm-hmm. toe boot. Mm-hmm. They, you had on work shoes. They had on work shoes and, I, and they te- got te- you. Technically, that was a technically, commercial. technically, technically, that uh, get, get both balls with one shot. Technically a spoiler. Yes. Technically, Absolutely. technically, technically, yes. technically a spoiler. <laughs> no, no, I, no, you no know content, what? No content, I wasn't even thinking about that. I, know, I, I know literally was not even thinking about that. I know you weren't, but like... <laughs> Technically, that's I was saying. just thinking, what would be maximum pain? Since you said that's worse than getting shot in the face, I say kicked. I would say kicked in the face, in man. The face. Wait, 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 wait. Why are we? <laughs> how, are we how are we escalate <laughs> the gunshots shot already? In the balls is worse than getting shot in the face. So I mean, we can keep doing <laughs> all day long. Yeah. How do we escalate <laughs> to get shot in the face? Maybe, maybe. No, I'm gonna ask y'all. I'm gonna ask y'all because I had this thought after the film opened. Has there ever been a a superhero film? That opened with what should have been an after credit scene. No, no, should have been the, not even it's after credit. And, and the, and no. it should be the, at the end of a it's movie. It's the, it's I was like, after- that is an af- that is absolutely an after credit scene. That they went, we're going to open a movie with this, and I was and like, nobody was okay. Nobody was. Nobody was when it, when it opened. Everybody in our theater was like, "Oh." I, like said, I, I, I looked at the person sitting next to me and said, I'm not going to make it. This is some bullshit. It's, I'm like, this is how we're starting? I'm not going to be I'm, okay. I mean, honestly, we're gonna, I, I know on the MTR network, we're going to have like at least like three, four spoiler reviews on this film because you, you need I to. I think we you, should just have you, one big-ass roundtable spoiler need to, review and we should see, all lose our much. minds together. See, that's too much. I, I've tried that before. It's, it's just too much. Niggas talk over you. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot. And I ain't trying to wrangle all that shit. So we're going to have a bunch of it. But like... And, and and we really mean it. Like the trailers are mostly shot with footage from the f- like first quarter of the film for the Get most that. part. And and they and they don't and they and they're and they're purposely um ignoring a lot of stuff because like even showing you some characters technically is a spoiler. And so there's just so much you don't know. Um I'll say this, like to me, I said this on Twitter, this is a film that when you think about it, it shouldn't work. It really shouldn't. Like, to stick the landing with, with this film, I love Infinity War. This film, and I, Brandon, I think you said it, you, you were like, Infinity War was like episode one, and, and Endgame is like the rest of the fucking season. 
And it it's is. true. It, it's true. And it's Infinity like this is the pilot episode. Right. Like, this, it's the pilot episode to right, a series. Right. This film, this film does, this film does so much with this film. There's, it, it ends the Infinity Saga. It gives you some closure with some, some, some characters. It, it gives you fan service. If you watch every single MCU film, it gives you fan service in those films. All it, like, there's, there's moments from these from, from that, that you're just going to love that ties back to these other films. There is something for, if you're a comic book fan and you're waiting for some iconic moments from comic books, they're in this film. It's like it's something for every, and then on top of all that, with it coming being like it, the you know end game, it's the end, and we're celebrating you know ten, eleven years of doing the MCU. It then also somehow manages to see the future. And I was thinking about this on the way home. I was like, you know, some of the implications for some of these, the the Disney Plus shows they're going to be doing, are huge, and mm-hmm. it does all of this. It seeds p- potential other movies and things like that all in this one film to do all of that in only three hours. I'm at three hours is a long time, but to do all of that in, in three hours and it's a tight three hours. Like when Kevin Feige said, you're not going to be able to get a good time to go up and go to the bathroom, get an intermission. Nigga, he was not lying. He's not lying. Like, like we, we had a conversation and I, I like in during the credits and I said to Chris, it had to have cost them at least $200 million just for the casting alone. I, I don't, I don't under, I'm not going to say I don't understand, but I have never seen so many at this point in their careers. What a lot of them, I consider to be a list actors in one film, not nowhere near this many. And I don't know what type of contracts Disney got people signing. But their planning and preparation is off the charts. I, I can't imagine how much time it took them to storyboard this. And I'm looking at it having had to be years in the make. Like, we know it's years in the making from the films, but just, just for this film alone, there, there had to have been just an office for in-game where you only went into it during other films and talked about how this would affect in-game years in advance. That's not unreasonable to say. I think it's absolutely perfect to say. I mean, it managed to do all the things that you guys are still selling and still t- and still have its own core standalone stories. And that was what was really impressive to me. That not just did they have to go in and do all these things and and pull all these threads together and corral all these people to get them back and everybody came back and looked like they were happy to be there. So it's not just that they got paid to be there. There are people who came back who literally were on screen for two minutes. And it was a great two minutes. And they all looked really happy to be there. And it was perfectly done. And, and they didn't just pick iconic moments from the comics and from the MCU. They picked like that this little nuance. This whole movie was just funny. So that they built a comedy out of complete and utter tra- tragedy. So this wasn't a death march to the end. Was the other thing that I thought was really impressive. Um, and I do have to say that I am far more interested in possibly giving them my money for Disney Plus <laughs> than I was before Endgame. <laughs> I still am not going to do they it, got you. <laughs> but they almost got me. And you know exactly which scene towards the end of the movie mm-hmm. made me think I might have to pay to see this. Damn it, you I may welcome. have to pay to see this. But the, see, and they made promises that I believe Marvel will keep. That That's where like the comparison for me with the dc shit comes from because dc also makes promises and they never fucking keep them (laughs) like but when marvel at this point makes a promise i'm like okay and in this film they made a big promise they made a lot of promises nigga they They did but they took a they went all out and Mm -hmm. made a fucking statement of a promise and i'm like yo you better capitalize on it yeah this whole movie was promise after promise after promise i mean the resolution and the, the moments that they use to bring iconic pieces of the MCU together to where they needed to be to line up with everything that they want to do towards the beginning and to still respectfully bring things that we all ad nauseum were more than ready 
to see them let lie to rest with respect was impressive. So mm-hmm. uh, I guessed a lot. Um, I more than m- m- things that I thought might happen or thought might be the direction that they went. More of them actually happened than I in- I-, I anticipated, just because I'm usually wrong in these situations. And I will say that the one thing that I wanted to happen more than any other thing in the entire MCU did happen. So I'm gloriously happy. That's, I can't really say anything else but, besides that because it is a big spoiler. But, bro, that's, that's where I was at, too. I was like, I wasn't, I don't want to say I wasn't shocked when the things happened, but it was more along the lines of, like, wouldn't it be cool if, nah, like, nah, they'll never do that. Or, nah, they won't go do that. And then as the film was going on, I'm like, Wait, they're gonna they're gonna do it. Like, there were several times yeah, at the end of the yeah. show. I'm like, wait, they're about to. I started sitting in the chair like, oh yeah, I'm like, they about to do it. They, are they about to? Are they? <gasps> oh, there were people, not just me. I was like, they're really gonna do it. I'm like, yeah. it's really gonna happen. Mm-hmm. At one point, I sat forward, going, mm-hmm. "Come on, yes." Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, you've committed. Like, let it happen. <laughs> and, and, and it was for the whole movie like that. Mm-hmm. That's where other people who who take comic book films, who take comic books and turn them in the film miss the mark in my opinion like being in a theater of people who saw that like chris who saw that coming and me kind of being oh wait what is he talking about and like looking for it just just based off my experience through the films it adds to the experience of going to see this at the theater like if you're trying to sell the cinematic experience this is the way you need to create these films and give them back to the fans because our whole theater was quote-unquote lit during the same scenes over this film. And I'm, I kind of want to go see this. Like, I can't wait for our live show Saturday because I already know it's going to be off the fucking chain. The, the commentary is going to be great. This is, I use, we go see Marvel films and I'm like, oh, this is a cool film. This is like really good film. I don't, I can't remember the last time I went to see a Marvel film and I was like, oh man, I wish I could have got to see this with like a whole group of my niggas. And then we all love Marvel films. And this is absolutely the one you need to go see with your with your Marvel crew. Cause right. it just makes the experience so much more enjoyable for y'all to to be it's it's so much Marvel MCU meta in this film that everybody is gonna see like a moment that they loved or a reason that they went back and watched the other films in preparation to see this. And I think the film does a great job at that too. Ashley is not into these films like that. Ashley was like, Do you think I'm gonna like Endgame? And I was like, Yes. The fact that you don't know anything doesn't really matter Cause it, because it, yeah. you get enough. You get it from the film. Well, and, and that's what it, 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 this is a film that's good for first time, assuming they saw Infinity War, right? In the basics, right? It's good for people who've seen all the MCU films. It's good for people who've seen just the MCU film but never read the comics, or the people who've done all of it, read the comics. It's good for everybody like, across the board. There's something for everyone. And that's the thing, uh, and like I said, I'm going back and forth with these Snyder, Snyder trolls and, and Snyder cut people online, but, 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 but I always go back to them because it's like, to me, they always seem to miss the fact that they're always hitting the MCU for just jokes and comedy and chuckles and things like that. I'm like, but that's what Marvel is. Marvel Comics is that way. Like, to me, one of the most tragic characters of the MCU has been Thor. And this, what this film does with Thor, he's both the comic relief, but then after you're done laughing at him, you're like, hey, yeah, but he actually been through a fucking lot, though. Like, Bruh, he's he been said through- it at the end of Infinity. Like, yeah. and then you're, it just isn't good for a lot of these characters, right. and despite <laughs> it being funny, like you said, it's tragic. Yeah, that scene, hey, that man, scene I, I thought, but that's what they do. That's why I thought this was great. That's why I flat out said, I'm like, this was a comedy that has an emotional heart and it had a real story built around the reason why every single time somebody was fighting, every single time that there was conflict, every single time there was emotional upheaval, but they still managed to still blend together what's good from the comics, especially for those comedic beats. And to have it be built around Thor was perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, and, and it makes hilarious. Sense. Yeah, and wrong, hilarious, <laughs> wrong, but make, but also makes sense. Like that's the thing that people always miss is like the comedy in these films isn't forced; 
it's 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 almost like that dark humor, which is again, if you read these comics, if you read Marvel comics, you know they do that. They have those serious things where some serious shit's going on, and somebody cracks a joke, or somebody does something silly or, or ridiculous, and you're just like, whatever. And then the serious shit happens. You're like, fuck. Like it's it's an yeah. amazing thing, and it, and it, and and honestly. With a film of this scale, it's hard to jump between those tones and not be, not be distracting. I won't say that sometimes in, in other Marvel films it's distracting, but the Russos in all their films have this way of doing it in a way that is just perfect. Like, well, I think, they, I think the Russos have been able to, to kind of actualize what the audience is thinking on screen. And that's why it's so much easy to connect with the jokes and the beats, and that's why it's fluidity and the transitioning between those scenes and the mood and tone. There's, but it's there's, also because they finally leaned into the fact that Chris Helmsworth is fucking funny. Yeah, yeah, and, I, and thank you, Ghostbusters 2016, the movie that people claim is so goddamn terrible for really showing the world how fucking funny he can be. Um, right, I mean, that's, that's not, but that was what was wrong with some of the individual movies, particularly his first movie. You got the gravitas, you got the grandness of the Asgardians and everything, but that disconnect between the emotional connection and the funny wasn't there. It felt gimmicky. Once the, the Russos picked up from what they had seen for his capabilities, as far as I'm concerned, Ragnarok, um, you know, and the in-between moments where he was being silly and, and they started to build some of that into Thor's core character that became the comedic beat for all of it. So it wasn't just because they were letting Chris's be actually more naturally funny. Those became the comedic beats for other characters behind it, because then then you follow behind Easty, they started to slowly morph the arc for Hulk in that Mm -hmm. direction. And you started to get those kind of comedic beats, even with the, the conflict and the strife between Tony Stark and Captain America, you started to get that kind of feel. And once you get that type of synergy when it comes to your comedy and you're leaning into what happens best and it's built around someone who excels at that, that's what you get. And I don't care with the DC people. That's exactly what's wrong with the DC movies. They don't have anything. Every single time they find it, they throw it away in the next movie. Or they take it out of the character because somebody didn't like something. Or they go back in and reshoot and fuck it up for everybody. So... Is that and they they like you cannot do comic book films and not do fans like nah you I mean it's, it's impossible and and since that's the disrespectful MC, and since why the, are you doing since, them since, if you're not doing them for fan service why are you doing them and, and, and but that's the thing it's like since because since, you want Bayham since 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 Iron Man one it's been that like when that first trailer came out we're like oh they're they're doing Iron. They gave him the Mark One. Oh, they're doing Iron Man. They're like they're really, they're really doing it. They're not gonna. Oh shit! And as the technologies have changed, and as they've gotten more comfortable with it, like this is this is literally in game. Literally is the end game of this is what happens when you lean a hundred percent in to the source. It doesn't mean you can't change the source. It doesn't mean you can't 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 evolve it and, and, and massage it so that it fits with the medium of, of, of movies, but you got to play to those moments there. And, and there are so many, you can't talk about them. But there's so many of these moments in this film. We were just like, this is fucking amazing. Like they do. Yeah. This. They, they, they brought this in they, there. They did a great job with the pairing of characters too. Mm-hmm. When the storyline goes in that direction and they're, they're these, these characters end up together and you start to see the similarities between them. And there were a lot of them that I just like some of them. I was like, yeah, this this definitely works. This works for comedy. This works for this. But there was one pairing. There was a couple pairing in this that I was kind of that I, I didn't really see coming. And I felt dumb for not seeing it because it made so much sense. That they would have they, that they would connect on on the thing they did connect on. So. Little stuff like that added more significance to characters that tended to be side characters mm. a lot or kind of like not necessarily background noise, but they say a couple of funny things throughout films and they're significant during battle. But like you never look at them and, and go like, what's really going on with this character? Because the film never takes it that far with them. And I thought in game, despite the mass amount of people 
that it put the spotlight on still was able to develop those characters beyond what we've seen already and give them more ground. Yeah, and, so, I, I feel like they be, they better balance the number of people who needed to get time on screen, even if it was just a few minutes, better at Endgame than they did in, in Infinity War. A couple of times in Infinity, there were moments in Infinity War where it felt like people were kind of a little, moments were a little too stacked on each other for everybody to get everything, especially for the newbies coming in, just speaking, you know, cinema-wise. I felt like it was much better handled in Endgame. I, I mean, I thought it was well done in Infinity War, so I w- I'm actually impressed that they actually were able to improve upon it in Endgame. Yeah, it's... And I can't really say why, to be specific. Like, I can't do any comparisons because they're all spoilers. <laughs> everything's a spoiler. No, li- literally everything, everything <laughs> is a spoiler in this film. Well, you know what? The thing that I, I really, really in- enjoy is that... And, and this is something that... T- 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 there's two things. One... Uh, Alan Silvestri, Silvestri, Silvestri's uh, like score is just it's brilliant. Yeah. It's it's just you're never gonna get better than that. You, you, I, it, for these films, it's like it's just it's it's the it's it's John Williams's you know Star Wars themes for Star. I mean, it's just it 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 fits so well with these things, and especially towards that, that final battle, it's just so good when it comes in. Um, but also it's, this film is so much character development up, up, you know, up front. There's all this character development happening and, and it's not bad character development. Like there's nothing else going on. It's important stuff that's happening and you're, you're invested in it and they, and they, they, they make it funny. There's action, there's stuff that's happening. So you don't feel like, you know, you're bored and there's no downtime. Like this is, it's odd to say this, this is a tight three, three hours. Like. The 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 Russos have been doing movies for 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 Marvel since Winter Soldier, and if you got any of those Blu-rays from them, you know they never really had a lot of extras. Like the Blu-rays for those movies, some of them get bad reviews because people like when they get Blu-rays, they they don't review them for the movie, but they review them for the extras. People complain there's not a lot of extra scenes or a lot of extra footage with Russo Brothers film. It's because they cut this shit down and they shoot and they know where they're going to get. So they made this three hours flow pretty well. Like there's not a downtime in this film. There's not a moment when you can sit there and go, Oh, I take a break. I don't need to know this. Everything that happens you need and everything calls back to infinity war and, 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 and other films. And it's all important. And you get to that final scene. Like I remember the first Avengers. And Avengers was great. But when we got to that final, the final, ba- the battle in New York, and, you know, the Avengers are formed up, and you're like, yo, there's like 30 minutes of this film list. Are we about to get a 30-minute battle? And the same thing happens with Endgame. Like, the film is great. Everything's going great. And then you get to the end, you're like, wait, are we about to do a... Is this about to be what I think it's about to be? And There's not enough. Screen. There's just not enough screen. I, I can't wait to see this. There's in IMAX. really not. I can't wait to see this in IMAX because there's going to be so much going. Like now, I'm waiting for to see what is, IMAX. What is? What did you guys see it in today? Uh, 2D. Just regular 2D. Regular 2D. I, I cannot wait to see this in IMAX. Honestly, oh, I can't wait they to see put it at home. In the RPX. I, I can't wait to see it at home. I can't you wait know, to see. We got home. to see this in the RPX today. Ooh. I have no idea what that is. You guys are. You guys are going to lose your minds when you go into uh, a better, bigger screen. We were in the most massive non-IMAX screen they have, and they turned on all of the Dolby surround sound, perfect hookup. Like They went through the whole montage of setting the speakers in the movie theater and making sure that everything was to scope and lining up the frame out of it. I was like, they just expanded the screen. I ain't never seen them pulled back sideways and up. I was like, Lord Jesus, I'm not Ian, I'm telling you, you truly are not ready to see this on an IMAX screen, but you need to. Yeah, it, this has to be seen on the big screen, because there gets to a point when, no, I'm not going to say anything. Like, it's just, you need to see it on an IMAX screen. Like, the... it, it feels like you bought a special edition of your comic and got one of those pull-out um, bo- the, both sides for the full panel. Let, let me put it the way. It's yeah. like, they... Yes. 
The it's in- just that kind. So not only did you visually get like fan service, but you're about to get like the the absolute ultimate hat tip to like a true boss battle. Mm-hmm. And and it's 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 beautiful. It's just I mean I'm cannot wait to see it again it's, on Saturday. It's 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 what we wanted. Like this is the thing that when I always get people complaining about the MCU or saying Ooh, DC does like to me the ultimate thing about a comic book film is that it feels like a comic book. Like, I still want the good story. I still want the good visuals, the, 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 the good acting, the care. I want all that shit, right? But at this point, comic book films, for the most part, are already getting... You're, you're getting top talent, right? For, the, for most of these films. And, you know, we can work on the direction. We can, work on, we can work on the story. But even some of that stuff, I can overlook that stuff. If you still make me feel like I'm sitting down and I'm watching what I read every day on my, in my comic books. And that's what this, like, this film gets the acting. It gets the, gets all the other stuff. But then when you're sitting in that, that, that final scene, it's just like, this, this is like somebody, they brought an artist in to do storyboarding. And, and they did like, this is, this could have been in game, the comic book. It could have been, it's just, it's truly amazing, and I, it's just, it's, I can't wait to talk about this. I can't wait until, you know, the, everybody's seen it, and then we can actually talk about this film, because there are just so many things that... I mean, the live yeah. event is Saturday. Right. <laughs> it's just, like, I didn't realize we would have so much, but an hour and 15 minutes is not enough. It's not. There's just too much in this film. It's ten years worth of shit in this film to reflect. And they did, and, and they did it beautifully. They did it beautifully. But can I just give the public service announcement that I know everybody's been kind of floating around with the whole "it's three hours if your kid can't sit there and behave, don't bring him, don't bring your friend who doesn't know how to be in a movie and let a movie explain things to them that they don't understand." Just don't, don't bring that friend who's like, "So where are they from?" Or who is that person? Don't bring that person with you to Endgame. Because not only are the people around you going to be pissed, you're going to be pissed. Because every single time that you have to try to stop the pause to get this person up to speed or to help them out, you're going to miss something and you're going to be pissed. So this is not the date movie for the person who kind of sort of says, yeah, sure, I kind of like comic films or I kind of like superhero movies. Oh, wait, no, I haven't seen Inf- Inf- Infinity War. This isn't even the date movie for who, somebody who hasn't seen all the damn Iron Man movies. This is not the movie for someone who's not going to know who the fuck Bucky is when he shows up, if he shows up. This is not the movie for someone who doesn't understand why people are all jacked up about half the world being gone. This is not the movie where you get to give the dissertation on who Thanos is and what the fuck is wrong with him. Do not bring those people with you to this movie. If you do, you will be angry with them. If it's a date, it's going to be your last date. Oh, if no, it's, no, no, if no, no, it's no, your no. partner, I'm telling you, don't do it. And in game's not a date movie. In, in game's not a date movie. If you, if, if they were, I'm sorry, I might have been a little, I might be a little bit extra on this because these people were, there were people like this who were sitting behind me. A press person brought a guest who was like this, and we all about lost our collective ass minds. Woo, 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 woo. I'm pretty. I'm breathing. I'm just saying, don't do it. I just want to you add. End up single. You end up single. I just want to add to that. And water is wet. Like if you're no, bringing- no. I really, truly, honestly feel like it needs to be said because for some Which, movies in the ridiculous. past, those people are ridiculous. If you bring somebody like that with you, you're an asshole too. me and chris were joking before the movie started and you know how amc rolls their little commercials about going to get go get yourself some popcorn and get a drink it's the same commercials every time but there's a point in that commercial where there's a couple and when the movie starts they link up hands to hold them to get ready for whatever rom-com they about to watch and i remember i looked at chris and then said marvel should have did their own set of amc commercials where the couple go like somebody, and I don't care which one it is. One of the significant other goes to grab the other one's hand, and that person snatches it like, Mm-mm, "Don't! What are you doing?" And then leans forward. This ain't that type of movie. This ain't cuddle fest. There are moments where you both might hold each other, but when the movie is going, shut up. If you're a crier, bring bring some bring something for your face. Yeah, brain tissues, but shut up. Like I'm I'm completely cool mm-hmm. with you crying, the sobs and stuff that we heard, the sniffles. 
they were just they were due. I held back a tear. Like I completely get it. But there was absolutely no talking for three hours <laughs> during our film. And well, we we started I, to have that, and we had to we had to shut it down. You got to man, like you like fuck that ruining the experience for other people. I remember when I listened to a podcast and get one of the one of the hosts had moved to like Amsterdam or something, and he was talking about like their theater experiences are different. They talk all through the f- film, and every film is like a Rocky Horror Picture Show. And I was like, well, everybody, you know, then I'm never going to that country to watch a movie because that's not a, an acceptable theater experience. I can't hear conversation that's- coming. from that's not a theater experience. It, for them, it, it seems to be that that was the kosher, most like the most usual generic theater experience they have there, which I thought sounded awful. That's too many white people together. You're right. I mean, it is Amsterdam, so I'm just I'm just saying that's the root cause of that problem. Why they thought it was okay to even do that. I'm not paying money to hear what you think about this. I'm paying money to watch the movie. Like yeah. I like no, nah, that's just like uh, <laughs> you, no. But we 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 truly like before the movie started. There was one girl who was like, she's like, okay, she's like, quick refresher, and it was the most impressive ten minute rundown I'd ever heard in my entire life. And then she looked <laughs> at her uh, the person she with. She's like, I miss anything? And he's like, hell no. Nah. She's like, okay, cool. I'm not talking to you until this was over. And he was like, bet. And then they were good. But there was this chick who was just behind us. And like I was cool because eventually my ears just turned off and I leaned forward and I got all the way into the movie. But unfortunately, the person who was sitting next to me was closer to the conversation and said she never stopped. Okay, so this person, oh, that was the second movie. Oh, we'll have well, what's this? And where's this person? And how come we don't know nothing about this? Or Wait, why wouldn't they do this? This is a critic screening? Yeah. This is a press screening? See, yeah. see, see. She doesn't work yeah. for a publication. Like she got in on on a plus one. Yeah, sadly. she was a guest, and she was a guest, and See, and, don't, and and you don't you was don't. very politely informed that she could be disinvited during the movie. Yeah, don't 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 bring that. So here's the thing. All right, like I'm not saying that people can't ask our questions. I'm saying, at least for me, it's not going to be my first or second viewing. Like <laughs> this is my first viewing. My second viewing again on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> I love a chanty to death. She's going to be to the end game one, the end game screen on Saturday. I can answer all the questions in because then I've seen it twice. I haven't had my moments, mm. and we're good from there. Um, it can't, nah, be, it can't be my first. I screening, already yo. warned everybody. Just can't, be don't. My first, can't be my first screening, yo. Can't be my first screening. Don't I can't. Ask some questions at home. Be like, yo. Here, here's how I feel about this. Here's how I feel about this. We've been watching these films since 2008. If you got questions, you had. 11 years to fix that. Don't come to this movie to ask those questions. Don't come sit during the season finale of a show and start asking questions. Like, don't do that. And that's what this is. That's like coming and, at me with your season one, season two Game of Thrones questions. And I'm going right and, and to be honest. Don't, yo, don't come at me like that. And I'm going to be honest. Endgame is a much, is like Infinity War is actually easy. In in that respect, Endgame is a much harder film, guys. Like, no, there's, no, they, they there's throw, more. There's way there's more shit you'd have to explain more, to people. Why yeah, is you, laughing right yeah, now? yeah. Why is literally, so <laughs> yeah, no, literally, this whole situation. If I mean, you, people are going to ignore us, but this is literally your mama can't help you if you're not coming in here ready or prepared to sit and just let the movie teach you what you need to know. Don't go to this movie on anybody's first, second or third viewing, quite frankly. I mean, this is not this is not question and answer time because we're not we're we're, we're truly not kidding when we say everything is a spoiler. The trailers spoiled nothing from this movie because you will realize very quickly into the movie everything that you saw in a t- trailer is out of context. So far oh, out of context, oh, all of these oh theories my. that were being built around it, they're all trash. Yeah, individually, collectively, they are all trash. This movie has not been spoiled. Uh, anything that leaked is is trash as well. Walk away from all of it. Walk in this movie with what you know, and if you can do that, you're fine. Even if you don't know anything about this world, it'll teach you everything that you need to know. But this, this isn't complete on its just, own. It, it's yeah, complete. it's absolutely complete. But there are things in here for us who've been doing this for eleven years, right? And, fair game like that's right. how it should be that's why we're but, here that's why we're so excited but, 
But even in those moments, if you just wait a minute, the movie gives you just enough of a tidbit for you to realize why that's important and why that big dude three seats down from you keeps wiping his eyes on his shirt talking about his allergies. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I, I, you, your allergies won't bother you in hour one, but you cracked hour two, homie. You're not going to make it to the end. Uh, listen, but that, listen, I, listen. I, I wasn't crying from sadness. I was crying from laughing. Cause... Yeah, no, I, I laughed myself to tears a couple times. Yeah. I was fine to the end. I was fine until the end at the very last question that I got asked on a particular porch. Mm. And then I was like, I'm ready to go. Because <laughs> I'm not going to cry in public. They did a but, lot. They did a lot at the end to get those tears out. It's like your tears are sitting on the end of your, on the edge of your ducks, and you're like, "Nope, I did it. I made it." And it and like it's like, uh-huh. Marlon, like, hey. like five, he comes in, he's like, "You sure?" Yo, yo, it's it's the last one. It's the the last one was what got me. I was like, "Nah, y'all not gonna do this." Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, y'all, y'all good. Y'all some. They got me. They yeah. that very mm. that very mm. last thing. I made it mm. all the way to. I'm like, mm. okay, I'm cool. I'm, I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it out of here. I'm gonna be all right. And then that last, and I was like, damn it, I'm gonna cry. I'm like, damn it, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not okay. But you know what? But, it is, um, so so here's a the question. Ro- let me ask you this. Realize everything. Ro- Ro- let me ask you this. So is it was it a cry about the, the last scene or was it a cry about the, uh, uh, the accumulation of everything? Because it's like, like part of me was like, yo, it was. That last thing, I don't know if it was crying particularly for that last thing, or if that last thing just sent me over the edge, because everything else was... I, I was okay. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> I, mm-hmm. I think that last thing was just the thing that pushed me into the water. <laughs> but <laughs> but not just because of that. It's just like, when, when I say that I feel like they couldn't have done a perfect full circle for the entire phase better, they couldn't. I truly mean that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now I can't get you can't be any more specific than that, or like every like we would just be nitpicking trying to work around not giving anything away. But like I really felt like there was just this moment where a, a, a line gets said, and it, it perfectly mirrors something that happens at the beginning of this entire MCU Avengers journey. And then so you get to that last scene and that last little bit, and I was like, nah, I'm gonna make it. I'm um, keeping it together. But this is some bullshit right now. You know, fuck the Russos so, and the writing team. Fuck all y'all. And then we get to that last moment. I was like, I'm, I'm not. I'm crying. So, so in public, uh, I'm so not it making was, it. For me, it was a combination of just every, of the whole thing. Yeah, like, that's just that last thing just pushed me all the way in the water. It's, I mean, not just the film, but everything that the film brings from the past into this film. Like that's mm-hmm. what that's what got me. Like I was like, yo, this really is like. The, the ending of this chapter like this it, this isn't like a oh maybe there's more for this and i'm like no like this is this like this, i will this. say this i will say this for the people who were going into this movie with the hopes that the whole you know rush to undo what Thanos has done is somehow going to lead to a reset for where they are in this story they are going to be disappointed I mean, that was not that is not right. the purpose. And, and I think, I think when they say end game, they mean it. And that's and I, good. Yeah. Because it can branch off. Like they, no, they, I they, think it's perfect. But I, but you know, those people are out there. Yeah, yeah who no. Live in a world of these are my people. These are my guys, and they live in hope that somehow or another oh. that end game is going to reset time and reset the universe in such a way that things can just keep plugging along in the ways that they already like and they don't have to allow any room for newness or innovation or storylines that go in directions that's not their cup of tea and i and i think that those are going to be the people who walk away from this movie with you know some high key disappointment oh yeah absolutely and i care about them yeah. in the sense that they should have known better. So there's two things about that. So one, um, and I can't wait till we do spoilers on this one. Comic Gator motherfuckers are gonna be pissed. Marvel bases this movie basically said, "Fuck you to all of them." Because there's, yep. there's a couple scenes in here. Yeah. One, one during the final battle where I was just like, "Oh, wait, oh, oh, word, we." We might be. Mm-hmm. Are we gonna? Are we gonna no. do that? Oh yeah. Y'all, y'all, so y'all showed uh, Y'all gotta do it now, right? Y'all, y'all, y'all really gotta yeah. do it. So there's that. Um, yeah. And I just, I just, I love that. I love that they, I love that they said, 
no, no, we're we say we were gonna do do this. We're 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 we're, we're committed to that. And here is us putting our our foot down, saying, "Here's our promise to you going forward that that can actually happen." Two mm-hmm. to kind of to and, and this this is a spoiler because they they show it in the trailer. You know that you see you see Steve Rogers, Captain America, in that 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 um that group talking you know talking about their feelings, right? And of what happened, and um, I want to say, did, did, did you give you a breath of how this film connects to all these other films? I forgot that in Winter Soldier, Sam was running one of those like meetings for PTSD for for other soldiers, mm-hmm. and here yep. you have in this movie, here's Cap in the like is it, is those kind of things right there, and like again, if you didn't watch Winter Soldier. Would, and there's another Winter Soldier thing in there that is, mwah, it is Bruh. so fu- like the inti- that was that was one time that thing. that was one of the times when the theater we everybody was like, wait, are we about to are they about to do? And then they they but changed they it the way I wanted them to. Right. Like they did exactly what I wanted them to do. I was I saw this scene coming and I was like, bruh, this is all you got to do, yo. And was- when they did it, I wanted to jump up. Like I was like. Thank you. Somebody actually yelled out very loudly. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was so because good. Films get it. Like you. You know how we have these conversations after films, and we're like, "Why wouldn't you just do this?" Mm-hmm. Given all of the information you already know, mm-hmm. and we're like, "Oh, well, that's not really what they, you know, the writers wanted to do, or maybe somebody just didn't think about it." And it's clearly the most obvious thing to do if you have an ounce of intelligence. And in this film, I was like. Oh man, come on, man! Like, don't, bruh, use the cheat code. <laughs> and when that motherfucker uses it, I was done. Like, it, I was it, done. I was like, oh my god! But it, I it, can't believe. It. And that's one of those like, things it, that it's one of those things that if you if you somehow didn't watch Winter Soldier, you don't get any of like you like you'll get enough of the scene to, to understand and be like, oh, okay, I guess. But if you watch Winter Soldier, you're like, that was fucking brilliant. The entire scene, from the way they were setting up, like you thought it was going to go, then how they he act, they actually handle it, you're like, you couldn't you have done it better. You get a little giddy. You, like, I mean, you don't feel cheated. No. I, I, like at first, I was like, because because I had thought to myself when I when I came up with it, when I was in the theater watching it go down, and I was like, mm, it just makes sense to do this. But if they do this, then maybe people might might feel cheated out of seeing something more grandiose. And it doesn't take away from it at all. It's actually so much better <laughs> that they actually did it mm-hmm. that way. Yeah, it's, it's so much better. It's so fulfilling. Honestly, there were so many things that happened during the battle fight that I thought were so much better than anything that I thought they were going to do. That, like you said, one, you absolutely and completely do not feel cheated at all. And two, the execution was so like I was like I didn't even think it could be that good. Yep. The, you just sit there and go like okay, I, I I wanted it, but I didn't know okay, y'all are better than I thought you were. The, and I already thought y'all were badasses. There's some subtle things they do. There's a subtle thing they do with Carol Danvers. It's so subtle. It's it's actually it's not it's cosmetic. But it's so like y'all get it. Y'all get it. Like they were. I mean, people cheered. Like you were it, part of that group that was cheering. Yo, I was. I I, cheer, I was like, oh, yo, so good. And and they did. And they did things with her. Like, as far as the statements about her, because there was a lot of piss ants dropping their opinions about Captain Marvel, and it's this and it's that, and it's just it's a bunch of like dick hugging themselves as dudes who can't get over their own fucking misogyny. Um, there is a. There, there is there's a scene in, there's a few scenes in here with her where it's like if you don't like Captain Marvel after seeing her here, I I say this from the bottom of my heart, you can go fuck yourself. I mean, if this movie doesn't resolve for people, this whole there was no story arc in Captain Marvel. When you see the culmination of who Carol Danvers is in Endgame. You don't understand. You don't want any. You 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 don't want subtlety, or you only think women's story arcs. Women are allowed to have emotional growth in one particular place and in one particular part of their life. And can we speak to another person 
who just gave me a deep, happy, excited moment when I realized how they were going to be used to bring things together. And that was Pepper Potts. I'm like, when you saw him talking to his helmet in the trailer, yeah, you kind of thought that the story was going to go one particular way with her presence, be it in real life or just in theory in this movie and what they choose to do with that part of the story and that part of the, the universe to bring it full circle was just joyous and they had like people talk about how Gwyneth Paltrow at was all he wasn't annoying in this movie like it, it and it just just to go back to when I when I say you can like fuck yourself about how you feel about Captain Marvel like Rose absolutely right about people bitching about the storyline of the film which people are bitching I'm talking about Brie Larson but directly for me I'm talking about Brie Larson playing that character like if y'all don't believe that she's Captain Marvel you can go fuck yourself yeah, because she, I don't know what your problem is in this movie. She fucking owned, she owned it in the first one. I didn't see the issue, but if there was a nece- if there was necessity from her for y'all to bring it home, she absolutely does it and powers through it. Literally powers through it while bringing it home. She is Captain Marvel in this fucking movie. Like this, so, is, like, yeah. Mm, yeah, um, this film again. It, it it both ends the the Infinity War saga, but then also sets up for the future, and and again because you know you know the, with the Fox buying I mean uh, Disney buying Fox thing it's like it sets up for the future without using any of those characters. I know a lot of people are like, oh well, they're gonna do this. I'm gonna tell you right now, like, bro, I don't know. Did your your screener probably didn't have an end credit scene either, did it? No, but yeah, so, there was sound. Yeah, so yeah. Uh, we're not sure if there's there actually is an in credit scene. They're just not showing it at the screener or what they're doing with that. Whatever. So I don't think I, there's going to be one. I think they're leaving it with is. that. I don't think there's one. I don't think there's one either. I, I mean, I mean, there is. There are several different places where a blacksmith, and that's you know, or or like anything could go with any parts of everything that we've seen. So I don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think there's an end credit scene here. Um, I don't think there but, should be, and and I don't think I don't think there needs to be either. But it, but regardless of that, it's like this film is the end of that saga, that eleven year saga. But then it also sets up because we already know. I mean, we know uh, uh, Phase Three doesn't technically end until after uh, Far From Home, the next Spider Man Spider Man film comes out in I think in July. Um, July. And then we and then we July know second. they're doing Eternals. We know. Um, Doctor Strange to get into the movie. We know Black Panther to get in a movie. We know there's a bunch of other movies that they're working on, right? And 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 this film, I believe, also sets the way for not just uh, more other other kind of films we might want to see going forward, but also like their Disney Plus shows. So I, I think that it's again, it's this weird thing of it's the end of the saga, but when you when you finish this, you're not sitting there going. Well, I guess they got to bring in the X Men now, or they got to bring in the Fantastic Four now. No, honestly, I still I end end game going. So the Fantastic Four and the X Men are probably to be their own universe because where do they fit in this? Why would we you? Don't, right? Why we don't, would you? Bring we don't them even. In we don't even need them here because we have so many other stories. There are still so many other stories to tell. What the characters are in this universe right now, we don't need those stories. Like there's something that happens where you're like, huh? They. Like there's a there's an interesting thing you can do with Guardians of the Galaxy and Thor movies and 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 what those franchises do on their own and how you do those and then this film is like we don't need the X Men for that we don't need nope. we don't need the Fantastic Four for this so nope. I, it, it's it's it shows you how strong this this the MCU has been without those characters and now they have them in there I mean yeah sure would I love to see the Fantastic Four in the MCU absolutely yeah give me that shit after this shit. That shit will be amazing, but we don't. I I, I totally get now why Feige was like, yeah, we can take our time. We don't need to do that right away because they have so many other stories to tell, and they're clearly already ready to tell them. So, I mean, this? that's X Men television show on Disney Plus. They've, they, we've done like enough movies at this point. Just just do a show. Just do honestly. Like, I don't like, really. I don't even want those conversations. I like what they're doing. I mean, it clearly they have a plan. And their plan 
it, it, it's very expansive. And I walked out of here going, I'm like, this was great fan service. I love the score. I love the soundtrack drop ins. Uh, I loved how they use all the characters and I can't wait to see where they go next. I very rarely come out of a movie that's supposed to be an end of the era movie excited to see where they go next. I didn't come out thinking that we needed to pull in other characters or, well, now that you own X, Y, and Z, we can do JKL over here. None of that shit even crossed my mind when I walked out of the movie. Mm -hmm. And that made me happy. So I, I mean, everybody should just table that shit. Trust me, when you come out of here, there's so many moments where you're going to be hoping they put out a damn poster or put out a t-shirt or something else because you're going to walk around and like point to your favorite moment from the movie on your chest. You're not going to be thinking about that stuff either. We don't need it. We don't need it. They clearly have a plan. And, I, and I'm perfectly going to say to stay the hell out of Kevin's way. Mr. Shaggy, he can do what the fuck he wants. They're good. Like, it, Mr. They, he can do what the fuck he wants. They had me when they did something that uh, the trilogies or films that have many sequels, when they reach their final set of films, which is usually two films nowadays, they have a thing where they're like, Let's walk down memory lane. And it's, I hate it. I hate it in every fucking movie when they do it because it's so forced and it's fucking corny. And I, I was just like, uh, this film does that. And I was like, I fucking love this shit. Like, I love the way they're no, doing it. None of it's corny. All of it's no, useful. None of it. Everything is purposeful. They had great hat tips. A couple of them made you want to cry. I'm surprised no one has ever... I, I mean, I understand why other movies and films might have never thought to do it this way. This film took a... This film absolutely took a risk playing with a particular subject matter that is absolutely taboo in the cinematic whatever conversation. It's in conversations about films probably for like the last 30 some odd years. And a lot of, a lot of creators don't want to... Are, wor are worrisome of touching it. Because fans can be awful about it. And with this film, I like that they give the middle finger to any questions. And also stick within their reality of how they're doing this. Like, I, again, it's, a, it's another thing where you could have easily yada yada and cheated your way through it. And I don't feel like they did. No, there was no cheating. And I loved every moment of it. I mean, I didn't feel like time was going by until the credits. Like, the credits felt like time was moving by. At that point, you were drained. <laughs> emotion. <laughs> On emotion. So many emotions. Well, not just that. You know how sometimes there'll be points at the movie where you have a recognition that you, I've been in here a long time? I never got pulled out of anything enough for that to happen. Cause, cause, and I really appreciate that because Steve Rogers gives it, you a this movie is three hours. Because Steve Rogers gives you a motivating speech and you're just like, yeah, let's go get the son of a bitch. <laughs> it seriously was like halfway through the film that you got that speech. Right, too. right. Okay, <laughs> look. Who, whoever writes his speeches pays really close attention to St. Christmas Day speech. I mean, because they just have that vibe. We few, we happy few, we band of brothers vibe. And he they, they, he doesn't, no one does it better. No one does it better than, I don't know what they're going to do because no one does him damn speeches better than Steve Rogers. Mm. The behind no the one's that. that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I just, I think it's, I just thought it was great. I, I, I liked the moments they picked where we got to get those little bits of the flashes of the past. And I agree with you that like the pairings of how they sent people out into the field, I thought those were really pretty, pretty dead on perfect. But like some of the more subtle stories and like that had to go that were involving in there and the way they circled back around to them, I thought was great. And I was just really happy, you know, without giving any specifics, that there was just one particular character who by the end of Infinity War, I just wanted to drown in a small puddle until he died slowly. I didn't have to see him <laughs> for the majority of this movie. And then when he did show up, it was perfectly contextually uh, aligned with what was happening. And it was the perfect use for that person. I will have to find out who this person is. Oh, you later. Know. I can't I... tell from how you're talking. 
Well, good. That means I was successful. But uh, I just, and I really feel like there was a lot of those types of moments. But I did, I did like, you know, at the end of Infinity War, there, uh, I got into a conversation with some people who were talking about, well, what do you think would happen with the world if half the people in the, the world were gone? And I was, and exactly how I said people would act is what we did. <laughs> I mean, James Cameron already showed us that he already, no, Kirk Cameron, my bad, Kirk Cameron has already told us what would happen if, you know, half the world went away or whatever. Okay, look, we're not going to discuss them left behind books. Why are you even bringing that shit up? Because it's really I got, I got tricked into reading some of those books before I realized they were Jesus books when I was younger with the woman who I was a nanny for. And then so I started turning the tables on her and like giving her kids other types of books that were straight up and down mm-hmm. fantasy and telling them that they were also prophetic, prophetic Christian materials. So, I mean, you know, that's how I feel about them books. Her kids read a lot of Philip K. Dick <laughs> and I gave them a better understanding of what could possibly be their future than that shit did. So whatever. But yeah, no, I just I thought it was great. I thought I thought that this is going to make people go read comics. I could see that. I know it made me want to go back and watch all of the films again, like all of them, even the ones I don't like. Yes. No, I was, it, yeah. I'm, uh, I was even intrigued to like go back and watch the first two Thors and the first Cap film because they brought back somebody else who I was like, uh, don't like that person. Glad that person isn't really in this, but is in this. That's cool, I guess. Man, there was just one moment when they brought back somebody. I was like, Come on, man. I barely handled y'all messing it up the first time. <laughs> Don't make me have to know that this is... I was like, I, there were a couple moments I was like, well, can't, can't we just, you know, if we manage to get what, like, the solution, can't we, like, keep the magic and just fix other shit? Like, they haven't even solved any problems yet. And obviously, like, I'm rewriting the movie in my head. Because I was like you, where I said, I was like, how are we not got to the, the solution yet? I also love that they didn't change other like there was one one change from the Ultron era that I always had a question about, but they were very strict about the rules in this film. And I'm glad like they stuck with that. Well now I'm gonna have to ask you what the hell you All mean. Right, when we so get let's, out let's go ahead and give it, Yeah, mean. let's go ahead and give our score because you got you, you niggas is getting getting is, is dancing around. <laughs> Spoilers at this point. So <laughs> dancing with fire. Right, 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 right. Right. Y'all yeah, dancing like y'all dance dance with, with y'all dance, y'all dancing with fire. All right. So uh, is, is it safe to is it safe to assume all of us is giving it tens? Yeah, mm-hmm. no, this is this is ten American asses. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna concur. I'm gonna concur. <laughs> I think across the board. Again, that moment. <laughs> so many people My go, Lord oh. Jesus. This is the best. Long for so long. So Lord well. God. But this this is I, I don't think I've seen a better superhero movie. No, of course. Especially not. not an ensemble movie no. that has this much to handle and does it this well. But this, so oh yeah. My God, but this... They gave more depth to Tony. Like I like I get it. Tony has had a lot of opportunities to be deep. But like they really they, they humanized him enough for me because he typically gets on my fucking nerves with that ego and that arrogance. But like this this event breaking him humanized him for me. And I was like, oh, you know, I mean, uh. but they, they, I really they, felt like they did that with a lot of people, though. Yeah, it's, true. It's it's this has been this. This film is you're right. This is the, to me the best. Not just best comic film. This is the best ensemble film because I don't know another yeah. film. I don't know another film. Period. Comic book, whatever that has this many characters and juggles this much de- character development for those characters in one film and does it in a. I hate this. I, it's crazy to say this. A tight three hours, you know, yeah. where everybody. Yeah, gets they along. didn't it's- sacrifice story for characters, but they didn't st- sacrifice character development to get through any of the action. And that's no. talent. Yo, the Russos are very talented as fuck, guys. It, they just... Fuck them. Whew. Fuck them, man. Fuck them. <sighs> fuck them. I say that with love and respect. Fuck them right now. I'm not okay sometimes. Okay, so, I'm not okay. So we're not even going to tell you to go see this one because you, you're already going to go see it multiple times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 4,000 th- 4, ar- 4, showings around the country are already sold out. So if right. you had made that decision... Right. Unmake it. So, um, just, just... I will say, 
be careful with your drinking. I, I got to talk to the shanty. She bought this. I didn't want to tell her because I know she's not drinking, but she bought this little, uh, she's going to hear this. She's going she's gonna to yell at me, but she bought this little wine, wine, wine baggy thing to put wine in the drink. I'm like, I have to go to the bathroom. And I'm going to tell you right no. now, you're not going to want to drink while you watch this movie. Don't do it. One Don't. guy went to the bathroom in a movie theater. One guy. And when he came back and sat down and looked at the screen, he went, shit. Yeah. He had about seven. Yeah. But they we, were all old. And their nursing home aid wasn't there. To that, that was, them, no, so that was not, that's not it. true. That wasn't all of them. We saw. We saw. That's disrespectful. We were, cause, cause, Don't cause, be disrespectful. So, so, so Shannon, who I love Shannon. She's, a, she, she's our, our rep out here. She, she hooks up all the time. Uh, she sent an email. Yeah, she, she's great. So if you're listening to this, Shannon, hey, how you doing? Thank you very much. Um, she sent an email out right before, uh, like an hour and a half before the movie, basically uh, saying, hey, listen. Actually, no, like two hours before saying, hey, listen, this is going to be a packed screening for press. So, you know, it's first come, first service seat there. So get out there early. So everybody got there rather early. I'm saying at least like 45 to 30 minutes early. So what happened was everybody goes to get their food and drink. So people didn't just get drinks. They started drinking. I mean, I'm talking like halfway down their extra large Coke. And I'm, I'm sitting there going, you know, we're five minutes before the movie even starts. You guys are halfway through your drink. You're not going to make it. You're n- and five turn- minutes before the movie is when I took my bathroom break. That's what just I to did. make sure I was good to yeah. go. I didn't drink water. I had a smoothie for breakfast. There I did not have salt. Sol- I did not have any solid food. <laughs> no, you rogue it out of my head because I did the same shit <laughs> at nine uh-huh. in the morning, and I was like, "That was my food for the day." Until I got a tub mm-hmm. of popcorn at the theater. That was my food. I didn't even get popcorn. I got popcorn for the tub because they had the Avengers metal, whatever. Oh, tub. fair enough. Fair enough. That's fair enough. But yeah, I'm a, was, I'll probably get that one on Saturday. But no, nah, I didn't do nothing. I had a fucking smoothie. I had a spinach and mixed berry smoothie this morning at 930. And that was it. I was like, I'm I not- went with mangoes because they slightly dehydrate you. I was not fucking around with this day. I, see, I didn't have that bit of information. And if I had mangoes, I might have thought that. I'm just saying I wasn't playing with nobody. I even went over to where the movie theater is. I had somebody drop me off over there. I worked in the Starbucks from 1030 to 1230. By the time I got over there, there was already a line of pressing guests waiting to be checked in. And we waited to the side. And then we got there and they split the lineup. Guests had to check their phones if they had it. Press had to go in and sit down. Me and one other press person went. We went use my book bag to block off seats. Yeah. <laughs> You had, you got to man. Like, but we were having we were having a whole look how many drinks are almost gone conversation before the movie started, right? Yep. So maybe like the last five or ten minutes. And like while we were having the conversation, I was like, if it's even a little bit of something left in me, I need to go get it out. Yep. So That's I, what I was thinking about. And I was like, let me just go do this before I end up being that person. Like I, even though I haven't drank anything since again, 9 30 this morning like, let me go ahead and go do it um so, mm-hmm. all right so last thing before i want to wrap, wrap out here uh, i don't want to get into it it's i don't think it's a spoiler one of the russo brothers is actually in the film um and i want to point it out because i want to shout out marvel because marvel gets good you know some and other films get 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 shit for this too shout out them for actually taking a character's gay it was such a subtle thing in this film, that they did it, but it was fantastic. But the way they did it, and to me, again, lays the groundwork. Now that you've done it, everybody needs to do it. It's so e- It showed how easy it is to insert LGBTQ characters in a film, and and keep it moving like anything else. And because they're real people who exist, and if you don't try to make them some type of other, they fit naturally into the world in which they actually exist. And, and it was well done. I, I well had to done. point it out there again. It's is you when you see it, when you hear it, you'll get it. Like it's 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 brilliantly done. And honestly, if you're not paying attention, you might even I, you might even miss it. Like. Because it's, it's a conversation, and it's just... It, you know what it reminded me? It reminded me of Mass Effect 3. It reminded me of the conversation uh, your, your pilot has in Mass Effect 3 when you start talking to the pilot. It's just 
so matter of factly and nobody reacts differently because why would you? You know, so I, I had to pull that point that out because it's you know, we get on them when they don't do it and when they did it here, it, it was brilliant. So I mean, I I I really that that that's that's a comment that I, I'm glad that you made because I really feel like a lot of people have just got this idea in their head that addressing, you know, inclusive elements of the real world with real people and real characters has to be some type of chore or it has to like stand out with flashing neon lights and i think the exact opposite is true if you start treating the world like people are real and they're all here as a part of the world then it's easy for those things to kind of just flow without feeling like it's disruptive to what's happening and I think more people need to pay attention to how he did it and then, well, copy him until they figure out how to be natural. Yeah, absolutely. So. Uh, again, folks, uh, so that's, that's our non-spoiler review. Again, get on premium. Get ready because we're going to have a ton of, of, of spoiler reviews, I know, coming on premium and other, other avenues on this network. So, um, yeah, uh, you are not going to be disappointed by, uh, by Endgame. Um, Anybody, you guys want to take a uh, stab at what do you think the worldwide box office? You know, what, let's not even do worldwide. What do you think the opening no. weekend? What do you think, do you they're think, saying nine hundred million. Nine hundred million opening weekend. That's what they're saying. I think so. I think. I think. I think it can come close. I think they might get it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I don't see it. four thousand sold out shows around the country. Uh, I believe in it. <laughs> there. Yeah. So. Yeah. <clears throat> um all right folks thank you guys very much for listening uh whatever it takes uh for those of you guys coming out to the end of game screen with us in dc or la we'll see you guys on saturday and thank you guys very much until next time we're out of here peace, peace.